Hey guys, you're watching BTEX. I'm Basil and I'm being joined by Neuro and a bunch of really smart people who basically make this product. This is completely over ear, in ear fantasticalness. So basically the thing that goes in your ear is meant to get all the like trebly bits and make them sound beautiful while the outside bit can get the bass to just emulate bass, which is really, really hard to do. Not even impossible with headphones. I've never found a pair of headphones that I really wanted to feature on the channel until now. So the Neurophones, this isn't actually them. This is a box. It's made out of potato starch. Weird, I know, right? Biodegradable, all of that stuff. And it opens up to reveal a carry case for the Neurophones. You can see the Neurophone carry case looks nice and organic as well. Um, it's not leather, or at least I don't think. It's a synthetic kind of material magnet to open up the Neurophone. The Neurophones themselves just look from first sight like a pair of headphones until you realize there are these little nubbins on the inside and they actually slot right into your ears. Before I jump into that, let's see what else is in the box because this is pretty cool. This magnetized little element right here actually houses the charging cable, so you never ever need to be without your charging cable. While it's a little bit annoying that it isn't a USB, micro USB cable, or something a little bit more standardized, even a USB-C, the fact that you've always got it in the charging case is a good sign. Now these headphones are over 300 pounds. These are not headphones that you're gonna be wearing in the gym, they're not gonna be sport type headphones, so chances are you will probably always have the carry case. So bear that in mind if you're watching this video thinking these are all purpose headphones for you. They are all purpose, however, when it comes to music and audiobooks and pretty much everything. I kind of think they just make everything sound better. Okay, so I tried these on and I actually recorded my first impression of them in a cafe with the CEO. You can see in the background, you've got the Neura website and this is Kyle. That's a really bad screen cap of him, but it's Kyle. He's a really, really cool dude and he basically is an absolute scientist. Well, he's an engineer. He explained the ins and outs of how these work. The little nubbins on the inside, the earbuds, they push out the treble and you've got the over ear components that create the bass and they make it sound very, very cool. But what's even cooler is that and they send a signal into your ear and then you've got a whole load of stuff in your ear. You've got three bones that connect to a cochlea that connect to like your brain and everything. Your cochlea in your head actually produces sound back, a different sound, it generates a different sound and you need super sensitive microphones in order to pick up that sound and that's what the Neurophones have. By providing the over ear component, they create a sound isolating chamber that gives the microphones enough soundproofing to effectively pick up that sound. And as a result, read your cochlea sounds so weird. And I was like, so skeptical until I put these on. And that was really easy. I was expecting to have to like fiddle the things into my ears, but oh, it's talking to me. So when you put them on, they instantly fit in place. That's the first thing I wasn't sure would happen. I thought I'd have to be wiggling them around. It just said, welcome back, Basil. Not my name, my name is Basil, but I'll forgive them that. Um, so Bluetooth connected, it's immediately connected to my phone. When you take them off, they disconnect. When you put them on, they reconnect. It takes about a minute to two minutes for it to read your ear. And that's what I was talking about earlier. Projecting this kind of weird music sound. I'm probably speaking a bit louder as well right now. And that's because the noise isolation on here, instead of being active, is passive and it's really, really good. I can only hear myself talk through my inner brain, if that makes sense. Okay, so that's how you put them on and they feel pretty good. They don't get too uncomfortable and unlike regular earbuds, you're not digging them into your ears. So they're not gonna get super waxy or dirty or anything like that. So in terms of other cool things about this, they ventilate air in a really smart way. There's something called a Tesla valve. There are dots dotted around the whole earbud, um, the whole headphone, sorry. And it lets air out one way, but not another way. This is actually printed into the material. And that's how they stay cool. Um, I haven't tested them out for sweating, but in a hot country, you'll really, really want to know about how it does stay cool. Um, what's neat about the Tesla valve is with the base pushing, you're actually pushing air out from the top and sucking air in from the bottom. Given the fact heat rises, you're creating a nice little current within the chamber of the headphones. 
So that's the design, that's all the cool factor, and there's obviously an app to go with it, but how do they actually sound? Well, very different depending on who you are. I thought when I put these on, ran through the initial tests, there was a generic option which has everything super flat and I was like, oh of course they're going to flatten the EQ on everything that isn't the customized option. Then I put these on and I was like, okay but actually that's better than I thought it would be. Then I listened to someone else's profile and it was totally different. It was described by a colleague as like it's like putting on the wrong shoe when you're listening to someone else's sound profile it's like wearing the wrong pair of spectacles it's like just swimming with your clothes on it's a really really weird one and i can't really describe it any way other than these sound perfect for my ears and other people's profiles just sound a little bit wrong. How it can do this with me not actually inputting what I hear in order to customize the sound is really, really exceptional. What I found most exceptional is within the app, there's this bar called in immersion mode. And this actually lets you set fundamentally set the bass level and like I said the bass is set independently of the treble. The treble is what you control when you control the volume. Immersion is what you use, use to control bass and it means that even when you have a really really bassy song you can still get that treble in there. It isn't like a fake treble, there isn't just one driver, there are two drivers within each headphone. So yeah, these really, really blew me away. And I'm not an audiophile, I'm not a headphone person. And prior to seeing these, I would never have considered spending over 350 pounds on a pair of headphones. But when you put these on, and when you have a sound profile made to your ears, and when you listen to someone else's sound profile, you'll realize that they actually work. Now, there's a difference between these and the Usonic headphones from HTC, for example. The Usonic headphones measure a much more peripheral part of your ear, mainly just the ear canal, rather than going deep dive into that cochlea and getting that feedback back, because that feedback needs such a sensitivity. You would need an earmuff over your ear in order to actually pick it up. Um, and the HTC Usonics do work well. The Samsung uh, UI and indeed the Asus uh, I think it's Zen Audio or something like that, a UI where you can customize the audio levels to the beeps that you hear work really, really well. But what's amazing about this is those beeps that you hear aren't always meant to be able to hear them. So it being picked up automatically is actually better. I thought it was witchcraft, wizardry, that these actually know my ears better than I do. But after listening to other people's sound profiles, I am convinced. In terms of practical day-to-day -day application, walking around, out and about, they sound very, very good. All kinds of music, because it's customizable bass, sounds very, very good. What's really, really surprising is how much better it even makes things like audiobooks sound. I'm able to control the warmth and the dynamism of an audiobook by changing the immersion level. And so as someone who listens to probably more audiobooks than I do music, if I have a choice, I will always listen to an audiobook on a set of Neura headphones or Neurophones because Neura is saying that these are a new kind of a new product category effectively. There isn't anything else like it on the market. Um, and actually, having used it, I'm inclined to agree. So, in terms of a few practicalities before we wrap the review up, this has a pretty decent battery life. I've been using it for 48 hours over Bluetooth and it hasn't died. So, that in itself is very, very good. If it does die, like I said, you've got the charging cable in the box and that charges via USB to proprietary adapter. You can also get, if you're an early Kickstarter um, supporter, four cables, a USB-C cable, a lightning cable, a micro USB cable, and an analog cable um, in the box with it. If you buy it after the Kickstarter campaign, or if you're not an early supporter, then you only get to choose one of these. I'm not sure if it means one and an analog cable, um, but I'll put that into the description after I ask the founders, because I'd say you'd want an analog cable and probably uh, another cable that plugs directly into your smartphone, lightning cable, for example, if you have an iPhone with no 3.5mm headphone jack. Another thing that is worth noting is the fact that you've got two buttons either side of the Neurophone. On the left hand side you've got the button that can switch on and off immersion mode so you get to the generic profile 
I find this a little bit indulgent of the newer phones because you're always going to want the immersion mode on. It just sounds so much better. On the plus side, the buttons are customizable through the application even if your options are a little bit limited. I've been using this on both an iPhone 7 Plus and an iPhone 8 Plus. It's not optimized for the iPhone 8 Plus just yet, so the functionality is a little bit tapered, but for the 7 Plus, everything worked perfectly. The guys at Neuro have said that that's just going to be a line of code that they're going to throw in in the next update and that will be an update update that will be rolling out imminently. Um, I would have liked a few more kind of controls. I would have liked the touch strip to maybe be directional. So swipe up for volume, swipe down for volume on the left integrated with the phone. Um, and that would have been more useful for me personally than immersion or swipe forward for um, changing track, swipe back for changing the track. But those controls are on your um, lightning cable, for example. So if you do want to control your music and you're not Bluetooth on, um, then you can do it from from that or your Apple Watch or something like that. Perhaps more importantly, I did find they sounded better than all the other headphones I have. Now, I'm not an audio reviewer, but I have four pairs of headphones, all costing between 170 and 280 pounds, and that in itself is pretty great going. So that's my review of the Neurophone, a surprise hit. I was skeptical, I was hopeful because I hadn't seen anything like it. And now I'm just impressed. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, click that thumbs up button. If you like the channel, subscribe. It's how you're gonna stay on top of everything that we do here at BTEC. Thanks for watching.